it has been a hot day back for our first day back in Montana. Got to about 96, maybe 97 outside, and uh, it was brutal. The, the wave did a pretty good job keeping the bedroom like, you know, less than 90. Um, the rest of the camper got pretty warm, but it didn't last too long. It was just like three or four hours, then we were able to cool it off just by the air, the ambient air outside cooling down enough, we were able to bring that air back into the camper and cool it down, but it has been a hot day. Um, I am about to start working on these eco flows. Currently, I am upgrading the firmware on our oldest one. Okay. So just for reference, I'm updating this sucker and you guys are sitting on the newer one. Um, this is our older unit. It was running like 0.3 version of firmware and the latest is like 1.149, something like that. So we're getting everything upgraded. This should provide uh, quite a few of the things that we were needing. Um, mainly optimization of solar energy so that when it drops too low, so when the EcoFlow drops too low in terms of battery power, it shuts off the output and waits until it has enough AC power from the solar to turn itself back on. Something you'll run into though, is if you're running an older EcoFlow, So now that I have the right adapter, we will be testing out our new EcoFlow voltage hub. So, there you what we need for the camper. This is a 50 amp plug, this is a 30 amp plug. So the trick is don't draw too much power. This is another 30 to 50 amp adapter. This is however is a 120. This one is a 240. Which is why they call it a double voltage hub. So I doubt y'all can see this all that well, but pretty simple update process, at least on the newer units. You just hit upgrade and it's pretty much ready to go. I just killed my internet. I'll try to upgrade. That's gonna take All right, we're upgrading again. I gotta say, the upgrade process on this stuff is pretty resilient. Um, I've had to upgrade a lot of firmware like this on various devices, sometimes remotely, sometimes on site. And like this is super simple. So, very happy with these Eco for EcoFlow products. Haven't really had any major issues with them. Um, you know, the Wave could be a little bit more higher performance, but honestly, for what it does, like it, it straddles the like very economical energy usage and maximum energy usage very well so you know it's it's hard to beat all right we're up 15 percent keep running for a moment okay here goes nothing for the first time, we're gonna be running off of both EcoFlows. Hopefully they don't blow this up.
that's a new one. So we just got EcoFlow error code 553. Because they moved away from Zendesk, their uh, support articles aren't working very well. So before we left for Michigan, we ordered a shallow water well pump. And I was just kind of figuring out what size we needed at night and not really paying attention because it was like three quarter horsepower, half horsepower, some that was like one, but this was one and a half or 1.6. It said 10, 10 amp power rating, which is not a whole lot. I think that's about 1200 watts. And it's not a constant draw because this has a big accumulation tank. So hopefully this is going to work for us because we managed to burn through two battery operated pumps in two weeks of living here. Um, so I don't know what's going on with those. I'm going to get this thing opened up and figure out what all we need. So the next time we go to the store, I get all the right fittings for this. So on the side of this thing, it says um, the amount of lift is what I'm assuming, which you would think shallow water is like less than 25 feet, um, but this is a you know, shallow well jet pump, but pretty high horsepower, so I guess that's why it's able to pump so much, um, but if you're not lifting very much you can get uh, 1300 gallons of water if you're lifting a lot it's like 147 if you need to go down 150 feet I'm expecting our well to be easily uh, 200 to 300 feet deep so I don't expect this to be able to do what we want it to do but even if it doesn't uh, it's going to be very useful to have an electric transfer pump around here, especially this size. Hey, I might actually have one fitting to me. That's a first. And a roll of plumbing tape. Already liking it. I feel like this probably should not sit outside, so I need to read the instructions on that. Yeah. The motor must remain dry at all times or the warranty will be void. So that was easy to figure out. I am probably going to go find myself some plywood and build a little box for this stuff because there's too many things out here that I prefer to keep out of the winter, out of the weather. This looks like garden hose fittings to me. All right, it's getting dark, but I'm gonna tape this up.
see y'all in the morning. Probably not. Late afternoon. So the awning is not supposed to look like that. That's what it's supposed to look like. And I kept hearing it and it was making bad noises and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought it was the other side, but it's not, it's this one. So I need to do something to figure out why it's canted and half off its tube and do that before that big nasty storm hits. Fun times. Slide out lube and general purpose lube. It actually makes like no noise now, which is new screech and creak the whole way in and out but it's doing quite well and the storm is still on its way interesting weather when you live on a mountain like most places in the west you kind of expect to get uh, an afternoon thunderstorm during the summer and easily into the fall spring I feel like it's a given but a lot of these thunderstorms, they just produce lightning and not a whole lot of rain. But you can see we're getting some rain out there. Yeah, that thing looks pretty gnarly. We had a, a fire, I don't know, five, six miles across the river um, yesterday that must have blown up a little bit because there was two helicopters on it and they were doing their best it eventually got put out but they were running for at least a couple hours i feel like and i've already heard some lightning so it's uh gonna be another interesting afternoon so we're all finishing up week three at the property of actually living here we were gone for about a week and a half so i'm not counting that but it would be like actually we've been we've been we've had the rv up here for a month now so that's pretty cool all in all our systems are working i'd put them at okay um i was expecting to have a little bit better performance out of some of this stuff and it's just been a learning experience when you have solar panels that aren't in the sun or so there's an array of solar panels on this hillside over here and when the sun starts getting back that way those trees cast shade on it so you lose a lot of efficiency there they don't get that morning sun that would be very helpful they'll like get it you know it starts to to come up but it has to get you know into the afternoon before we're really getting good solid you know thousand watts of panel or thousand watts of uh, per battery charging um but honestly it's not bad it's uh we we haven't burned a whole lot of propane on the refrigerator that's been really good burn a decent amount of cooking but that's that's to be expected um, as far as gas goes, our big generator is what, that we use for running our neighbor's well pump when we're pumping water. Um, that thing's consuming a decent amount of fuel. Not a ton, but a decent amount. It's almost empty, so I need to fill that back up eventually. Um, there's... Our fuel consumption's been decent. I'm not, not thrilled about the amount of, like, propane that we've used, just... I think we've we've emptied out probably three yeah three thirty pound or three twenty pound tanks. 
Um, our big tanks are still going strong. They'll probably last until the winter. Um, a little bit of thunder, I think. Um, but all in all, our systems are working well. Water is is probably our biggest issue. Um, you know, who doesn't like a nice long shower? <laughs> and we've been rather limited on that for multiple reasons. One, our our pump system hasn't been great. Uh, using battery pumps, on-demand RV pumps is okay, but it, it only works in short distances. You try and run that through a 100-foot hose and you're gonna lose a lot of water pressure. So that's been an issue. Uh, we have a bigger pump, but that needs a check valve and that requires a, a trip to town or waiting a week for a delivery. So there's aspects like that that you have to take into account of like, do I want to pay, you know, 30 bucks to drive into town or however much it's going to cost. It, it might only be 10 or 15 at this point, but um, you know, it's, it's a decent, It's gonna get interesting. You know, driving in town and, and that fuel consumption has honestly been pretty considerable. Um, we can we can get to town like twice with the Explorer or maybe three times with the truck before we have to fill up, but we fill up anytime we're leaving town, just because we don't want to have the chance of, of running out of gas or, or having to pay for gas at one of the local stores which it's not that much more expensive but it, it is rather pricey and and those honestly aren't that close anyway like to get to any store around here it's still 30 40 minutes driving so um and then you gotta drive back <laughs> hauling trash uh getting mail all these things it's very time consuming you're spending fuel on it so things things to take into account things that i hadn't necessarily thought about um that are given enough consideration i feel like like obviously i knew i was going to be driving into town once a week to go get supplies but um you know being this far out and like i can just imagine being like two or three hours away from town we've, been, we've talked about living in a place like that and although it sounds fun you know you're really planning your trips making sure that you have your list you know what you need to get you're going to get to town early enough before all the stores close and that's a full day affair like and if you're working five days a week even if you're working remote you know good luck trying to do that on a day you're working so it's it's very much like weekend stuff like casey has uh been doing part-time work lately and it's it's been very helpful for her to be able to go into town while i'm working throughout the day or doing stuff up here So that's our month in update. Um, water consumption significant, fuel consumption not terrible, driving fuel consumption significant, power consumption more than I expected, but as long as it's not hot, it's not been bad at all. On days it's hot where we're running fans and those are constant draws like that will drain your batteries if you're not getting very good solar the entire time and it can be hot till eight o'clock at night nine o'clock at night so those last few hours that you are um running those fans to try and cool off your house or if you're trying to run it all night it's that that constant draw is significant well, it looks like we're getting a little rain today so we could certainly use it I really want to do water collection up here, but trying to do water collection and then winterize it for the winter is feasible, but not necessarily practical. And if we could just get a good well, I wouldn't necessarily worry as much about that stuff, but it would be certainly helpful for irrigation purposes or backup water supply, you never know. So we are transferring water right now have the 30 year old generator the 250 gallon tank the 350 gallon tank over there that's filling up with the starlink that i ran over i need to go pick up our replacement and uh that's that's the latest washing clothes up here collecting the the wastewater and hauling it off 
as well as just bringing water to the washing machine and pumping into the washing machine, all that sort of stuff. I'm starting to see why people don't do that more regularly. Um, it's, it's a lot of water. And on a normal cycle with, let's just say, a very small load of clothes, it's about 12 gallons. On a full load normal cycle, it's about 25 gallons, but a full load is two full baskets of laundry. So we can fit a lot, it's like a 5.3 cubic foot washer. So it gets plenty of washing capacity. The issue that we run into is like, so the water consumption. So because of this, um, you know, washing clothes up here really does require a well and a septic system if you want to be able to use one of these washers because just we, we use the bedding cycle today to see what that would do and in two loads which is two giant blankets in one load and then four sets of sheets in another load it used probably 100 gallons of water and that's nuts like uh we can't be <laughs> we can't be going to get water that much now fortunately that's four sets of sheets so that can last you one to two months depending on how often you change your sheets um hopefully you're changing them every two weeks <laughs> living out here you get a little gross uh i've never done more physical activity in my entire life than being up here and like sometimes just cleaning stuff up outside it's it's a workout so uh water consumption is is definitely our, our biggest constraint right now we want to get another tank and i want to figure out if this truck can haul two of these at once because that would make a world of difference and we just got this little trailer from our neighbor um they were cool with us taking that and it's uh it's not strong enough for like a ton of water but it can haul this generator and then i can have a second water tank in the back so there's a few options with that um but all in all i'm i'm pretty happy we moved up here we never never would have been able to get this place ready to live if we weren't like actually living here at least in the rv trying to drive up here however long it was from the campground it's just not not very feasible like i'm sure people do it but it honestly be easier to sleep up here in a tent than it would be to drive back and forth and like i'd considered doing that plenty of times so we will be uh getting started on our foundation here in the next hopefully month it's not like we have that much building season left um all in all we're looking forward to it